Hi everyone. On November 12th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of Saint Neolos the ascetic. Now many might have heard of him, and we'll get to that in just a second, but suffice it to say for now that he was living in the late third century in Constantinople. He was a man who was very well educated, very devout, very well off, and in fact was ultimately named the prefect of the capital of Constantinople under the Emperor Arcadius. Now Arcadius would also be somewhat famous that we will also get to in just a moment. But in the meantime, Neolos was someone who so greatly desired the spiritual life that he found that his office of prefect was getting in the way of his achieving further deepening of his relationship with God. Now Neolos was also married. He had a son, Theodulus, and also a daughter. Well, he decided with his wife's consent that they would both retire to monasteries, that they would go into the Egyptian desert, and that they would divide up the children. The boy went with Neolus, and the girl went with his wife. She stayed there with her daughter, while Neolus and his son Theodulus instead went to the Sinai Desert. Now at that time, there were thousands of uh, monastics around Mount Sinai. It was very, very well populated. And this is the place that Neolus decided to reside with his son. And they spent many, many hours every day enjoying only a very sparse diet of vegetables and studying the scriptures, attending services, and engaging in other very sacred and spiritual activities. However, at this time also, there was some disturbance going on in Constantinople. The aforementioned Emperor Arcadius, in his, well, we shall say, lack of great wisdom, decided to expel the holy hierarch John Chrysostom from his see in Constantinople. Now, Neolus was also someone who studied with St. John Chrysostom, and so this affected him greatly. After a while, the emperor wrote to Neolus, as did many people actually, because even though he had embraced the ascetic life, he was still very well known and would receive correspondence from all over the empire. Well, Arcadius wrote him and said that he needed help and counsel uh, because the city seemed to be just in turmoil and he didn't know what to do and was very confused about everything. Well, Neolus wrote back in very, very strong words. He said, you know, you ask me to pray for you and for the city, but this city right now is engaged in such a multitude of sins and first among them are you yourself who foolishly banished that great hierarch of the church, John Chrysostom. How can I pray for you while you still maintain this sort of attitude towards the great John, thereby depriving the city of Constantinople of his spiritual wisdom and his own prayers for you? Neolus was not happy with Arcadius during this time, but of course, St. John Chrysostom would endure several banishments from the capital city of whose throne he held. Well, after a while in residing near the Sinai Desert, there was a number of robberies and kidnappings and things like this that were taking place, many uh, of whom were slaughtered. In fact, on January 14th, we actually commemorate some of these people. And Neolus was saddened to hear that his son Theodulus was one of the ones that had been captured and taken away. It was rumored that it was by a bunch of people who were intending on sacrificing these people to Aphrodite. So yes, still in the late 300s, paganism was rampant, was still going strong. Neolus was very upset about this, of course, and he prayed fervently for his son, and then word came back to him that indeed he had been ransomed by another bishop who had taken them away from there.
and he found out what city they were in, and so he went to this city to beseech the bishop to allow his son to return with him. Well, the bishop was actually very impressed with young Theodulus and wanted to uh, bring him into the holy priesthood. But after listening to Neolus and his, his very, very fervent prayers and intercessions and beseechings of this bishop to let his son return with him to the desert, which the son also wanted to do, the bishop decided, well, what we will do is we will ordain both of you to the holy priesthood. And that's what happened. And then Theodulus and Neolus were then returned back to Sinai, where Neolus reposed around the year 450 after a long and profitable life. Both of them are now buried uh, underneath a church in Constantinople, which is where their relics reside today. Neolus, though, as I mentioned earlier, you might have recognized, at least hopefully you have, because he is one of the prominent writers in the four-volume set that we know as the Philokalia, which of course is a great collection of the spiritual wisdom of the fathers. Very, very deep, sometimes very hard to read, but also very soul-profiting. Now, Neilus wrote a lot of things. He, he wrote many letters. He wrote a lot of exhortations and sermons. But these works of his in the Philokalia are probably his best. Uh, which is how he is listed and known to most of us today as one of the writers included in the Philokalia. It's well worth looking at some of the things that he says because he is very, very penetrative in the way that the spiritual life is absorbed into the human person and how the human person interacts with God. So I would encourage everyone to take a look at St. Neilus the Ascetic in the Philokalia and spiritually profit by the things that he says there for all of us. He was a remarkable man who definitely had a remarkable teacher and a remarkable son and ended up in an even more remarkable life dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ.